Amy and I'm home in my kitchen and today I am making bacon toasties. This is my friend Christina Langdon's recipe and we've been making this together for about 20 years, shockingly. It is so good. It is like a little canapé, kind of a throwback to the 50s that is perfect in the summer to have with a really good friend and a glass of Prosecco. I am so glad the weather has changed because I love making these um, and having them outside. They're really uh, versatile and really easy to make. So what I'm doing now is cutting the crusts off of Pepperidge Farm very thin white bread. And again, this is like kind of a throwback to the 50s to me. I mean, I picture... First because all, you were I, around in the yeah, 50s? Exactly. No, I don't know why I think of like, <laughs> like, like a bouffant, like a woman in a big bouffant hairdo. Got an Upper East Side apartment. In an Upper East Side apartment, having her dainty little sandwich on very thin white bread, like maybe egg salad. No judgment, because that sounds really good, but... But I don't know who buys this, <laughs> but this is really great for this recipe. And what it reminds me of is Japanese milk bread, which is very popular right now. It's very dense and very thin and very white. And it just kind of absorbs all of the flavors of the top that I'm gonna show you what I'm making. So I have, um, my bread is ready. I'm just gonna set it aside for now. And I have my crust set aside. This actually makes really good fresh bread crumbs, so don't throw that away. So to get into the topping, I um, started by, I didn't want to bore you, so I already grated my cheese. That is two cups of grated orange cheese, and I really like orange for this. Um, is it cheddar? Can, it's cheddar. You could use white or orange, but I always feel like orange is prettier. <laughs> it probably has like orange food coloring because what is orange cheese anyway? It's not like it comes out of the cow orange. <laughs> but I think it's really pretty. So to my cheese, I am grating, um, a, I'm grating a half of a medium onion, a medium onion, or a small whole onion is what you want quantity wise for this. And I like to grate my onion because you don't really want big onion pieces in this. You really want the flavor of the onion. So don't worry if you still have like a big amount of like onion, all of the flavor is definitely coming out. And this is the largest holes of a box grater. You can cut it really finely too. I mean, there's really no, you know, nothing good or bad about this. Oh my gosh. I'm, crying from the onion <laughs> so i'm just pushing all this down it doesn't really make a lot but you don't need a lot and i am going to pick it up with my bench scraper this is a little bit of a messy recipe and if you've been watching um, my videos you'll know i hate mess but i'm gonna go with it because i don't want to clean up tons of bowls and tons of stuff so putting that aside to my bowl i am going to add some mayonnaise, and I am going to put this recipe with the video. Um, later on today, I'll publish this, so don't worry about um, wondering what the quantities are. Just so you know, that it's a half a cup of mayonnaise and one cup of toasted slivered almonds. So all of this is in. I'm going to add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, which I absolutely love. This is a condiment that everybody should have in their fridge and I put in about a teaspoon. And now comes the bacon. This is about 10 strips of bacon that I cooked off beforehand. You want it to be super crispy, not burnt. I like it right on the edge. And put that in. It doesn't really have to be crumbled just yet because when I stir this around, it will naturally crumble. That was really hard for me not to eat it. We had a rogue piece of bacon. <laughs> bacon on the loose. Bacon on the loose, yeah, exactly. Katie, do you remember eating this growing up? Of course, you, I don't think you've made them in 10 years though. I haven't, I, I, I kind of, I didn't forget about this recipe, but I have to tell you being home all the time has really made me remember a lot of the recipes that I haven't made in years. I, for, I have no idea why, but this is just one of those really good recipes. And I actually, I told Christina, who gave me the recipe that I was gonna make this, and she's so excited. Christina, I hope you're watching. 
if you're not watching now, I hope you're you're watching later because this is like it is all you, my friend, and the memories of making these with you, especially down at the Jersey Shore and just drinking lots and lots of wine while we eat lots and lots of bacon toasties is like a really fun memory of mine. So Stuart that, says all the secrets of a home cook come out in quarantine. Yeah, that's, who said that? Stu. Oh, uh, Stu, you're so right. I know. That's, and that is like a total secret, totally exposed. So here is my mixture. I have my bread. And all I'm going to do, I'm just going to make one. So I'll push this up a little, Katie, so you can get a good close up. So I have my crust here and all you do is put a little bit of this on here and you really do need to kind of get your fingers involved. You don't want to overdo it and you don't want to underdo it. You want like just a solid layer right on top. Don't get too, don't get too bogged down in the details here. That's pretty good. So that's what that's the a good example looks like. Hmm? That's a good example. That's a good example. And I am going to do this 11 more times because I have 12 pieces of bread. So you basically want to take all of this mixture and evenly divide it. And when you're at home doing this, you just put everything out like an assembly line. So if you have a little bit left over at the end, just kind of like, you know, distribute it so every piece of bread has this. So the next thing that I'm going to do is freeze these. They bake better when they're frozen for about 30 minutes. And of course, the great thing about this recipe is they can be in the oven for at least 30 minutes, but up to like three months. So you, you mean can, in the freezer? I mean in the freezer, what yeah. did I say? In the oven, <laughs> don't leave them in the oven no, for three months. You. Don't leave them in the oven for three months. No, leave them in the freezer for three months. Leave them in the oven for like 10 minutes. So I have, I made these earlier and I put them in the freezer and that's what they look like. I am going to pop my newly made bacon toasty back into the bag and I will fill these up in a little bit and put those in the freezer. So I'm gonna pop this in my oven. I have a 400 degree oven preheating and I'm going to cook these for about 10 minutes so in they go why do i remember you making sausage toasties also oh, yeah that's another one i i do i have another recipe called sausage toasties i don't think they're as good as the bacon toasties what do you do you remember do you like them well is it the same recipe just sausage instead of bacon it's a little bit different okay got I, it i feel like the bacon is a little bit in a weird way lighter than the sausage so it's it's like just kind of a crispier crunchier little pop of flavor to me um okay so i cooked a couple of bacon toasties just before um i came on live and this is what they look like you can see the cheese and the almonds and the bacon all melt together the mayonnaise helps bind it. The Worcestershire gives it great flavor. And then the onion is in there, but you don't really see it because I grated it. So that's perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these and you can cut them any way you want. You can cut them into little squares. I like to do this because this is the way Christina does it. And I have always stuck with tradition. So here we have our bacon toasties. Shall we try them, Katie? Yes. Okay. Here you go. Which one? I'll take one. I know. That's I always, the crispy one. So you okay. want that? Do you I, think? I think I want this one. I always go for the one that has like the ragged edge. Here. Yeah, like the cheese running like over it. it. I like it when the Look cheese at runs that. over it on the bottom. Cheers. Cheers, Mom. So we just need some Prosecco. We'll have that next Yeah, right? yeah, okay. we'll have that next. All right. <laughs> I hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining me. I will see you soon. Ciao.